like? Uh, what are your thoughts on that game and the way they kept coming at you? Yeah, they're uh, they're a hard playing team. Um, made some big shots, and uh, and then they got to feeling good and, and made some more big shots. So, uh, you know, and I think they caused us some issues on the other end. They started to be a little more physical, I think, in the fourth quarter, and uh, and we we lost a few and um, missed some shots, and all of a sudden they got all the momentum. So I was, uh, you know, I was excited about how we played that third quarter. Uh, fourth quarter, uh, we needed to step it up because. Uh, they gave us our best, their best shot, and uh, took a little while for us to settle and uh, answer that. Yeah, you know that these guys like to play at a really high, high pace. It's, it seemed like in the third quarter you really managed to slow them down. You ran them on the three-point line. Um, what did you say to the team at halftime to kind of change things up defensively? I really came in and said, "What do you guys think?" And they they knew what we needed to do um, defensively, play the pick and roll better. Um, Offensively, move the ball. Um, they switched so much. Uh, we at times attacked in isolation uh, and looked for mismatches instead of letting the ball flow side to side and, and attacking mismatches that way. So, some of these uh, things the guys had already spoken about before we got in. So we just got our our heads on the same page and uh, and they came out and played he really good basketball. He definitely emphasized the pressure on the ball. Um, because we were allowing them to do whatever they wanted to, and he wanted us to pressure the ball because uh, they were coming off and it was just wide open. They were getting passes, and the passes were getting zipped. So he emphasized on the defensive end to make sure that we got in the ball so it wasn't as easy. They made a real emphasis on trying to get the ball out of your hands, especially in all situations. Um, how did you see that open up and, um, and find teammates all night? Well, this is a, this is a team that kind of changes the, the pick and roll coverage throughout the game. Um, so it's, it's definitely a read throughout the game. Um, and I just I just try to read it as best as I can throughout the flow of the game. And just after that first pick and roll of each quarter, you kind of see how they're playing it. They kind of don't change it on the fly, but you can tell when they change it in the beginning of the quarter. So once we realize that, then you get to read it out there. And the guys do a good job cutting and helping me with the ball when I get trapped or if it's a, a hedge or whatnot. So. And uh, obviously, I mean, you guys are not locked in yet into the top four. <coughs> You're looking pretty good there. Um, what does a game like this do in terms of testing you as you kind of head into the last few weeks of the season? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think uh, basically since we were two and six, um, at that point in the season, it was every game was a test. And I think these guys have kind of been through the wars and, and done a really good job of responding most of the time. And, uh, and tonight was another case of that where that was a, it wasn't always pretty, but it was a playoff type basketball game in that it was one team throws a blow, then the other team throws a blow. And, uh, and we continued to fight and we answered that in the end. Um, so we, in our little time speaking afterwards, I just talked to them about, we're gonna get that, um, that great effort from every team. Every team's fighting just like we are. So it's, uh, it's kind of playoff basketball right now and it's super fun and super competitive but at the same time it's uh how do we how do we get better through each test and uh and we're trying to do that weekly you talked about the way they've responded you were here in december you had that fourth quarter lead they came back one in another time you led by 14 get in that last quarter they came back again what did you see from them this time around that you know make sure that they made those plays at the end to kind of close it out we we go into every game and we learn from our mistakes. We come back to practice and we go over it, over it, and over it. Um, and last time, like you said, we came down here and we had some slip ups at the end of the game. And uh, since then, we've been practicing it. Um, we're not going to say that's not going to happen again, but um, we got we're well prepared for it. Um, we just got to execute it. Uh, Mike, with uh, Nate, 150 big milestone, he often plays varying minutes between games on matchups, and tonight he had a lot of mismatches throughout the games. How do you balance of the mismatch opportunities between getting Oliver on the court as well in that position? Well, you know, when, when Nate's rolling, it's a mismatch um, for the most part. You know, there's some guys in the league who match up well with him, uh, but not many. And so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, these guys have a good feel because if, Dane Pino switches on to Scott, and John Roberson switches on to um, Nate. There's two mismatches, and uh, which one do you exploit? 
shot. Uh, Scott has exploited that really well at times, um, and and Nate's done the same thing. So you, it's really uh, just trying to just trying to attack. And uh, these guys do look for Nate for sure when he has any kind of uh, position, and definitely when he has a mismatch. So uh, I thought Nate gave us great energy, um, and and did some really good things for us, uh, especially in that. Um, second half. Um, Scott, um, every almost every game you have to play against a point guard, and this league's full of lots of imports and a lot of good point guards, including yourself. Do you come into every game expecting just an absolute dogfight against every point guard in the league? Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. Uh, there's there's no night off for us. Um, there's a lot of good point guards in this league, and I mean, if you if you come. If you come even like 80%, you're in for a fight, a long night. Um, so you just can't, you can't come in here thinking it's going to be a cakewalk. You can't think the guys are, uh, season's over. You got to come to play. You guys head home, you face Illawarra. I mean, in some ways, that, that game will put you lucky into the top four. How do you not get complacent as you face a team like that? We haven't beat them. Yeah. They've beaten <laughs> us three times. We haven't beat and, them. And they've played well against us. So, uh, you know, it's funny you ask about matchups and, and Scott find, playing against all these tough guys. That's uh, if we relax for a possession, you see Roberson knock down a three or Kyle Adnam, who's playing real good basketball. Or if we meet Mitch Creek a little bit late, he's on the rim instead of shooting a five foot floater. So it's it's possession by possession being ready. And that's what we're trying to get better at. And and. I think in patches we didn't do that well tonight. And then in that third quarter, we did it very well and decided that these guys were going to have to finish through our bodies if they were going to score. Um, same thing Same thing with Illawarra. They've beaten us three times. We have no reason to be complacent. We're not in the playoffs yet. Uh, we have a great group of guys who are playing good basketball, but um, we can play better and we need to play better. And uh, we need to play better against Illawarra if we want to beat them. And finally, Mike, you've got history in Melbourne, you've got history in this part of Melbourne, the, the heartland, the southeast. Yeah. What was it like playing a game out here at the SBC today? Yeah, it's amazing. Um, you know, there was a few people who were Magic fans who came up and said hello after the game, and Simon Mitchell's one of my best friends, so coaching against him is intense. Uh, it's a weird, it's a weird uh, competitive feeling, um, that mixture of, like, fighting and, and love all mixed up. Um, but the people around here are basketball crazy, and I loved it when I was playing Siebel in this area and, and NBL. And, uh, yeah, it's just a phenomenal place to come back to. Uh, but now I love going back to Cairns where we have less traffic lights, um, <laughs> nice less weather. speed cameras, nice weather, um, and my family. Yeah. But uh, So, yeah, love Melbourne, but, but love going back to Cairns. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.